Wee! Welcome back, Chargeheads. So, last episode, we managed not to break the body, and then Ralph decided to kick it repeatedly with his calibrated boots. <laughs> then we decided to have a little look underneath the body itself to see how much space we had. And then this episode, we're going to be using Ed, Ralph's mate, to use his laser beams Frickin laser beams to work out a 3D CAD model to allow us to work out what space we've got in the TVR chassis for batteries and motor. Enjoy. My particular scanner uses white light. It projects a barcode shape onto whatever surface you're scanning. Scantastic. Stupidly. What's been the most challenging part of this scan? Um, just the multitude of tubes uh, all intersecting each other and being able to physically move the scanner around such that I capture enough of each tube such that it can be um, captured in a usable form. And how do CAD models like this help us? We're just going to be able to use the scan data it's in a 3D format to position components on screen in CAD. Marvellous. More experienced Charge Heads fans will remember that I'm going to be fitting a Tesla Model 3 motor in the back of this TVR. Now the reason I'm using one of those motors is because of its longevity, it will be a used motor so it will be better for the environment and plenty of power so more than a comparison for the TVR Griffith and it will go like stink. Now this is why the CAD model is so important so we can work out how much space we've got so we can fit the motor, inverter, batteries charger and all the things we need to make this EV conversion happen and to be safe, which is also very important. Now Ed has finished his scan using the lasers. Reach for the lasers. A 3D and 2D model is produced, which Ralph can now utilize to work out how much space is in the TVR for the batteries and the motor. So I've just got a call from Ralph and he's got some news with regards to the wedgie build after doing all the CAD uh, stuff that he's been doing. Fingers crossed, everything's going to be all right and uh, we can get moving on the project. So let's go. Ralph, how you doing? Hello, mate. Good to see you. Thank you, Pew. Oh, thank you. Yeah, gladly, gladly. So what have you got for us? Well, we've had a look at your, uh, your chassis, which is there. Right. So that's the front of your chassis, that the back of it, so your diff normally goes under that bit there. Yep. Uh, and this is some ideas of where we can put battery packs. So the yellow ones are potentially battery pack spaces that we can use. This bit here is where your old fuel tank used to go. Yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. Where all those green ones are. Complicated space to use, um, but a possibility. We've had a look at down the spine of the chassis. Right. There was just support bars and bracing bars all over it. Yeah. That make it really impossible to get anything useful in there. Yeah, you did say that it was uh, looking a bit toit. I got my tight pants on. In there, so. A little bit more than that. Ah. Um, and, uh, and we still got to get some services down there as well, things like handbrake cables and the wiring limbs and stuff. So the, right. the spine's not looking like a good option. The engine bay's looking like an option, but it's not exactly rectangular. So it's a funny shape, which makes it difficult to get rectangular batteries into there. Um, but we can get a fair chunk in there, up, okay. to, up to a certain height. And is there enough space for the uh, Model 3 motor and subframe to fit nicely in the back? Well, so 
what we can do is we can put the uh, the Tesla drive unit in the back there, but it would be poking out through uh, the rear of the uh, the vehicle. The main problem you got is this beam here, which is part of the chassis. The Tesla motor comes out past there, which takes that out, and this one at the back here as well. So all of that has to be redone. Then you've got the problem that the drive shaft is used as the top wishbone. So all the cornering forces and everything push in and pull out from the differential. And the Tesla unit would just implode if you did that. Okay, the diff casing of the Jag diff is really chunky to take that. The Tesla is not designed for that. You will just crush the Tesla unit completely. So we can fit that in there. We'd have to modify the chassis a lot. Right. Which I'm happy to do, but okay. there's a knock-on effect from that. Right. And that is that the vehicle now doesn't have enough standard parts on it. We no longer have standard suspension or a standard chassis. So on the point system, yeah. we then have to go through an IVA test rather than just an MOT. So what's the point system, sorry? So the point system is a little system the, uh, the government's got. And if you've only modified certain bits of your car, you can carry on with it on the original registration as just a modified car. Right. If you modify more than a certain amount, effectively it's a new vehicle and it has to go through a whole lot more testing. Okay. And that new testing, the IVA test, individual vehicle approval test, is much more involved and goes through a lot of things. And unfortunately, one of the things they do at the moment for battery electric vehicles is they insist on testing of the battery packs. Okay. Obviously, we test all the packs we make, but what they need is a test certificate from a test house such as Myra or such like, which is quite expensive. Ah, uh, yes. I remember, um, I think Nick, when I went to visit Eco Classics, they said something about setting fire to the battery boxes. Perhaps that's part of the problem with the industry at the moment, right? There is no regulation. It only applies to new cars, That's right? correct, yeah. So all of those Westfield cars we've put through IVA. Yeah. Full ECE R100. So all of the drop, te drop tests, fire tests, mm. puncture tests, we'll do all of that on the battery. So when you say fire test, that's... As I understand it, setting fire to battery boxes, is it not? Yeah, so you put the battery box on a metal plate, light the fire underneath it, and it has to last a certain amount of time. Is that correct? Well, the full homologation test, you actually have to run it over a bonfire for a certain amount of time. There's impact tests and electrical uh, resistance tests. Right. They, what we need for the IVA, what seems to be happening at the moment, and there's a little bit of confusion with the government side of those about this as well, which doesn't help. Government and confusion? Yeah, I know. I went, uh, as, as we all must, to Peppa Pig World. It's it's weird, isn't it? But what they're doing at the moment is they're just, there's, there's two main sections to the regulations. Right. These regulations are called ECE R100. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? The like um, motorbike. Yeah. <laughs> Part two is what you need if you go into full production, which is setting fire to your batteries and all the rest of it, and making sure they're safe. Okay. We only need to comply with part one, which still means we have to send the battery pack off to somewhere like Myra for them to spend an hour doing the same thing that we do, but then they put a certificate on it. Right. Costs about £6,000. Excuse me? A baking powder? Gets better. Oh, right. £6,000 for each one of the battery packs. Oh my god. And how many battery packs? Three. Three battery packs. Six thousand. That's eighteen thousand pounds. Just to get a certificate for the batteries. Plus your IDA <sighs> tests and all the rest of it. So yes, we can stick a Tesla motor in the back. Yeah. But the knock-on effects from that is it suddenly gets a lot more expensive. Nothing to do with the amount of engineering in it. Although we have to re-engineer the chassis safely and make sure it's strong enough. Yeah. But the knock-on effects from the RVA point of view. And then the whole car has to comply with the current uh, standards. Well, I had a budget of 50,000. I'm not sure if my body is worth 16,000. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I think you are completely rogered on this one. Bring tears to your eyes. Oh. So it's a lovely idea to use the Tesla motor, but I think the, the knock-on effects of it, this chassis does not work with a Tesla motor unless you IVA, because the amount of additional work we have to do. We have to modify the suspension completely, modify the rear of the chassis completely. This is, it's all doable, this is, this but is it's going to cost you a lot more money. Yeah, I, I can't. Yeah, there's no way. No way.